And the second reason to head back to the entrance, I don't think you're in a- yeah, you're not in a good mood today. But that reason is, finally, we get to show what Teddy can do in battle. And yes, now you actually have to talk to Rise in order to go to the main dungeon. But anyway, Teddy's bio. Pretty bear to be amazed as Teddy bears his claws and banishes the shadows. Okay, I'll stop. Teddy is a very interesting party member. From a purely statistical standpoint, he's kind of just a worse Yukiko. He has better HP but worse endurance, and his magic and SP are his best stats and they're lower than hers. But what he lacks in stats, Teddy makes up for in a wide variety of support abilities. Getting the non-support ones out of the way first, Teddy is the party's main ice user, as Chie really doesn't care about her ice skills besides knockdowns. With boost and amp, he can dish out pretty impressive ice damage later in the game. He also learns a few physical skills, even more in Golden, but really, I just prefer to use Teddy's standard attack if I want to be doing physical damage with him. His strength isn't that bad, but I just find his skill slots are better spent on other things. Speaking of other skills that are usually the first to go for me, Energy Shower is good for a few fights, and after that you can just get rid of it. And Triesto is okay, but Goho M's are plentiful enough that you don't really need it. The main role Teddy plays is to be the team's secondary healer next to Yukiko. He learns all of the healing skills apart from Salvation, though he does get Medea Rahan later than Yukiko does, but for a lot of the game I feel they're about even as primary healers go. The main thing that Teddy has over her is his buffs. He gets Mataru Kaja, a fantastic buff, at only level 42. By comparison, the other person who gets it is Kanji, and he doesn't learn it until level 60. Level 42 is easily achievable in this dungeon, and it'll be immensely valuable in the boss fights. Later on, he also learns the full party defense buff, and through his social link, even though I don't like to spoil these, he does get a very good debuff as well. The choice of Teddy versus Yukiko as a support party member is very much a personal thing, but I personally prefer Teddy. And that's because, whether it's healing, buffing, or doing ice damage, or even using physical attacks, I feel Teddy always has at least something productive to do with his turn, and that's something that I can't really say for Yukiko. Something about Teddy that could be either a weakness or a strength, depending on what you're facing, is the fact that he's the only party member in Persona 4 to share a weakness with someone else. He's weak to electricity just like Yosuke. And for a certain reason, Golden even encourages you to put them both in the same party. Against enemies that use electric skills, this is very bad. But it also means there's less variety of weaknesses in the party if you have both of them. So you may be more likely to encounter things that don't have at least someone's weakness. So again, whether it's good or bad very much depends on the situation. Teddy's persona is Kintoki Doji a title that the Japanese folk hero Kintaro took for himself. Kintaro literally means golden boy, and he was said to be a toddler with superhuman strength, able to wrestle giant carp and even tame wild bears, hence him being Teddy's persona. It's customary to put up a Kintaro doll on what used to be Boys' Day but is now Children's Day, as a way of praying that young boys will grow up to be big and strong. In keeping with Teddy's mysterious origins, Kintaro has various origin stories, from being based on a real person, to more fanciful like his mother being a mountain hag who was impregnated by a bolt of lightning. No, I'm not making that up. But in terms of Kintoki Doji's design in this game, there are a couple of elements I want to draw your attention to. Why is he carrying a giant missile if he's based on a Japanese folk legend? Well, Kintaro was always depicted using a tomahawk. The missile the Persona is carrying is in fact a Tomahawk missile. Also, Kintaro was often depicted wearing a bib with the character for gold on it. Now that's not anywhere on this Persona, but that valve looking thing on the Persona's belly? It is actually the elemental symbol for gold. How fitting that even the visual design of Teddy's Persona is full of puns.
Now, I thought that before we head in, I'm gonna fuse away some of my junk personas that I just got for social links. But then I went in here in an earlier save file and realized that actually it's already time for another poem, so I had to reload so I could record this. Where could Marie have gone in here? Should I be worried? Eternal midnight. Oh, this one. For mornings when I can't see you. Spicy mint tea. For brunch, a marmalade muffin. A touch of bitter fits my mood. A sigh is stardust. It's like our own Milky Way. I can't catch up to your distant back. Look, twilight creeps up on us. The distance to you is like an eternal night. That is generally the most remembered of Marie's poems, and probably the one that's most iconic to her in a lot of the fan base, for good or bad. What is this? <laughs> I've seen a lot of people say, you know, to be fair, I'd definitely be pretty offended if someone called me a creeping twilight. <laughs> this is also a really great insult. Uh, Marie. I'm kind of surprised nobody's worked out by now what's obviously happening. But anyway, let's see if I can make anything decent from what I have. No, we get bonus social link experience today, so I'm guessing that's why we go into the TV on this date. Okay, I need you for Neko Shogun anyway, so... I might as well do this fusion, even though it means giving you up. But hey, it's something else for Null Physical, which means I can probably get uh, Null Physical onto Neko Shogun eventually. What was the skill that Margaret needed for Neko Shogun? I think it was just Buffala or something. Okay, it is Buffala, which means I need to make it in some way that is not this. Okay, I have plan, but I won't be able to do it until I have a bit more money. So I think for now I'm going to fuse Undine, because we will need a Lover's Persona for Risei later, and I can probably just pick up Queen Mab in Shuffle Time. Uh, you have Buffala as well. But with this combo, uh, and that is Mithra, Ikusa, and Archangel, I can pass down Null Physical. Yes, Invigorate 2. Oh, you naturally learn Medea Rama anyway, so that's a little bit of a waste, but... Uh, I suppose there's really not much other useful skills I can get onto other than these. Seeing you now, you are quite clearly a model swap of Sibeli. And also another persona that we haven't seen yet. Yeah, there actually are a lot of personas or in Shin Megami Tensei demons that are just model swaps of others. Kuhulan and um, Tam Lin is a one that's pretty well known, but there are also quite a few others. Like, like even the Onis, like um, Suiki, Kinky, regular Oni, they all just have their animations straight up mapped to each other for the most part, even though they do look a little bit different in terms of actual models. Hmm. Setanta is better, but this is more Compendium Completion, and Auto Sukukaja I might need for a later fusion, who I will hope to get before the end of this dungeon, actually. Null Physical, Marakukaja, and I guess Magaru and Zionga. Okay, so that's three elements on you. Some people are surprised that I haven't got a fusion accident yet. I'm not entirely sure whether it's a 1 in 64 chance in this game or a 1 in 32 chance, but that's why it's always best to save every time you do an important fusion. I'll explain how fusion accidents work when we first see one. You need to get at least one for a trophy, and I'd rather get one early than get one for a really, really important persona later in the game. Oh, 
okay, you just, um, learned all of your skills out of, um, just Social Link experience. I guess that's the power of Social Link experience updates. Okay, so even though we should be hunting for the killer to capture him, we're actually going to head to Risei's dungeon again. Yes, unfortunately we have to go back in the strip club, and in order to go there, we need to talk to Teddy. And we'll see the new and improved you very soon, but first we'll save. We've got some quest items to pick up here too, so yeah, I'm actually doing the rerun first this time. That's because the only reason why I didn't do uh, the dungeon revisits at the start previously is because we just were nowhere near ready to face the Contrarian King before going through all the experience of Kanji's dungeon first. But now I think we're actually ready for this next boss. Let's see, we need to bring both Teddy and Chie for this because they're both effective and uh, as for another party member, well... Physical attacks do pretty well in this fight, and I think Kanji will benefit from Chie's uh, Rebellion or Revolution. She might not even need to use it in this fight either. And I thought for costumes, we'd do something kind of interesting. So with the exception of Teddy, I've equipped everyone with the Agent costumes, so that we can be the FBI shutting this place down. <laughs> I just thought that'd be pretty great. Uh, also, um, FBI carry uh, shovels and big mirrors apparently. And yeah, there's Teddy. So Teddy normally explores and fights in his bear suit, but even if you don't have any other costumes unlocked, Teddy comes equipped with the summer clothes, which will change him into his human form. I don't think you could do this in the PS2 version, uh, correct me if I'm wrong about that, but costumes are new to Golden, so I'm pretty sure this actually is, uh, new. But he can also wear the agent suit, so we're gonna put him in that. <laughs> I forgot it was actually over his best. <laughs> That's really great. Okay, yeah, and let's get the, uh, the costume conversations too. Haha. <laughs> Yeah, I get the feeling Kanji would not be a good infiltrator. <laughs> He'd probably just charge into everywhere screaming. Yeah, I always wondered about that. Like, why is the stereotypical spy outfit those black glasses and a black suit? It just makes you look more obvious. <laughs> no, don't worry. We're not some um, mysterious agents coming to uh, kidnap you and wipe your mind. Oh yeah, it, it kind of would. And I wonder what Risei thinks of this. <laughs> By a lot, you mean uh, you're among them, right? Anyway, we actually only have three enemies to track down here. The Soul Dancer on floors 1 to 3, the Liberating Idol on floors 5 to 10, and the Sky Balancers on floors 9 and 10 only. There's one enemy. Hang in there. All right, guys, pile on. Ready? The Silly Face returns! We didn't get to see that before. Uh, but before that, I want to do something. This is our first chance to hear Risei as our navigator. We'll obviously be hearing her for the rest of the game. You want to scan enemies as much as possible with the L1 button. Because I can finally talk about something. There is a trophy in this game called Hardcore Rosette Fan. 
you get this trophy by listening to 250 unique voice clips from Rise, and I don't think it has to be in a single playthrough. I think it does carry over to New Game Plus. It's never been really confirmed, but general evidence says that it probably does. So you might think 250 isn't a lot, and it is, but if you rotate out your party members, you actually can get this one fairly easily. I'm not going to guarantee that I'll get this in my first playthrough, but I feel like I probably will. So for example, two enemies and an ambush. We're also getting some of Risei's lines for doing rush mode. For some examples of some lines that um, you can go for, one, two, three, four, and five enemies. And for each of those, that'll change depending on whether the enemies are weak or strong, if you ambush them, if they ambushed you, or if it's just a neutral encounter. That's already quite a lot of voice clips. Then you've got things like all the party members. Rise will have lines for a party member defeating one enemy, defeating two enemies, and etc. all the way up to defeating five enemies. She also has lines for that party member knocking down one, two, three, four, or five enemies in a single action. The party member getting a critical hit. The party member missing. The party member missing and falling over. The party member uh, hitting an enemy's weakness while it's already down. The party member having each of their three stats lowered. Don't let it get away. The party member having every status ailment. So for each party member, there's already, I'd estimate, like maybe 40 to 50 lines of voice dialogue. Oh, and I forgot to take Teddy off of, um, <laughs> off of automatic. Of course I didn't. But you get the idea, one of the best ways to do this is to fight a lot with diverse parties. What? Again? Three more enemies for you. And yeah, for one, two, three, four, and five enemies, Risei has alternate dialogue for uh, more enemies appearing as reinforcements. And uh, Teddy already has his follow-up attack, thanks to his automatic social link progression. <laughs> Wild Ways I find kind of quote-unquote interesting, because it's one of the few instances of actual on-screen blood in this game. I don't know if the ESRB ever um, paid attention to that when they were rating it. I'll talk a little bit more about the ESRB on this game later, because one of the things that they actually mentioned is kind of interesting. And yep, there are the two flower brooches I need. Oh yeah, I fused this thing with growth one, so um, it might be leveling up a little bit on the side. I find in this place there's usually one straight corridor like that before the stairs. Like that. Dungeons do sometimes have clues as to where the stairs are in their overall designs. Uh, using your one more to recover from a status ailment, that's uh, kind of interesting. Teddy can use energy shower to cure old man status. This is actually a plot point in the anime. Okay, well, you guys are just begging me to Mahama you. I was going to use this opportunity to talk a little bit more about Hardcore Rosette Fan, but uh, evidently not. This battle will be really quickly over. There is a Google Doc you can find out there that... 
senpai. That you can use to track the voice lines for hardcore Rosette fan. I don't know if it might contain some spoilers. Like, it doesn't really contain anything particularly massive, but Rise has unique voice clips referring to the gimmicks of some of the later boss fights. So that's probably why you might want to be a little bit wary. I think it is designed in a um, spoiler-free way, though. Yeah, physical attacks tend to not do much to these things. But they should finish it. Unless this also misses. So who's, next in line for <laughs> who's next in line for what? Okay, there we go. Yes, I up. And there we go. Resale, I don't think her level up quotes count towards Hardcore Rosette fan, but they might. So level her up as much as possible too. That's also another thing with Hardcore Rosette fan. Don't be too overleveled. Because she has different quotes depending on whether the enemy is weak, average, or strong compared to your level. So if you're too high level, you'll just hear the weak quotes of everything, which admittedly seem to be the case for Teddy, but honestly, I actually think his whole it's not strong at all line was for average enemies, not weak ones. Because when I went and redid earlier dungeons, he had completely different lines. Well, luckily, use that on the guy who resists it. No problem. It'll be over in a flash. Yeah, that's probably the uh, like average level compared to you line. I think I'll try for Mahama on this thing. We never actually showed defeating one of these tanks earlier in the game, so I may as well try to fight it now. I forget if you null physical or not, but let's see. I guess you can, uh, try this out. Does not. Okay, so I can still power charge. Or attempt to poison it. With a missile. Uh, okay. Nobody here is weak to... I, I guess I can do this to get its accuracy down. It's pretty expensive for Kanji's SP, though, at this point in the game. And, okay, Chie is going next. Uh, Oni has resist ice, so I feel fairly confident that I won't get one-shotted by... by its attack. Those could be famous last words, though. I only got one hit. That is the problem with multi-hit attacks, is that when you power charge them, sometimes if you don't get both hits of the attack, it's better to use, um, like, a single-hit attack that's power charged. Okay, that did more than I thought, but it still didn't uh, kill him, so that's fine. You're too weak to fight me. He says to a tank. Also, yeah, you can go as the only one in the party who has take a mortal blow for us at this point. So that would have been a game over if I had had any worse HP than that. And already we're kind of hurting for SP, but I have a lot of SP restoration items at this point, especially thanks to Tanaka, so I'm kind of fine. In one more floor, we'll start possibly encountering Sky Balancers, so I guess I can talk about one other thing. Uh, like I said before, for hardcore Rosette fan, you want to scan enemies with L1 as much as possible, because for weak, average, and strong enemies, Rise will have a unique line, so that's three different ones, for every possible elemental weakness, every elemental immunity, and for not knowing the enemy's weakness yet, or if the enemy doesn't have any weaknesses. This is going to be the stairs, isn't it? Yep, I knew it. So while 250 unique lines does seem like a lot, it's actually not that hard to do if you just keep rotating out your party, keep scanning enemies, and let your party members get affected by status ailments a lot. Like, while I was walking through the earlier floors, I was thinking, hmm, I wonder if in these videos I could actually track the lines with a counter, and then I was like, uh, I don't really want to put myself through that. 
I mean, it'd be kind of cool, but on the other hand, it would be a little bit crazy and a lot of work for something that you can track on a Google spreadsheet anyway. Gonna have to find everything on this floor in case the sky balances show up. So while I'm here, I guess I can talk about the tangent that I had prepared for revisiting this dungeon, and that is Teddy's voice acting. So I said earlier that in the original game, Teddy was voiced by Dave Wittenberg, okay, while he's voiced by Sam Regal in this one. Not entirely sure why they couldn't get Dave Wittenberg back, but it must have been a union issue, I'm guessing. And because there was new dialogue to record for Golden, they had to uh, record it all with a new voice actor since I couldn't get the old one back. Troy Baker did return for Golden, even though Matthew Mercer took over for him in the second half of the Persona 4 anime. Due to Troy Baker going on um, his honeymoon. I think it was his honeymoon. I think that was why. So anyway, finally the Sky Balance. Uh, if I'm remembering right, the Sky Balance is electric and wind attuned, so it's immune to those elements, but I think it's immune to just about everything. I don't remember it really having weaknesses. Okay, yeah, physical null, it's only vulnerable to fire, ice, and almighty. Repel, elect, and wind, and null, light, and dark. Um, it was weak to fire in the vanilla version, but it also, in that game, repelled ice, elect, wind, light, and physical, and... <laughs> It was weak to fire, but repelled everything else except Almighty. <laughs> like, what? What was up with the elemental affinities of the enemies in <laughs> in the vanilla game? It's just like, why? Why was that a thing that they thought was okay? <sighs> yeah, it was kind of weird. From what I heard, I think ice was the most common elemental weakness in the vanilla game, but in golden it's actually electricity, which makes kanji indirectly a little bit more useful than it used to be. Uh, kanji literally cannot hurt you, I just realized, unless I used an attack item. I think I got like a Magatama before, didn't I? Yeah, here we go, Arc Magatama. These are the improved versions of the um, attack items. They do 150 points of fixed damage. We also have this, which we got in our locker. But no, let's instead just use a, um, let's just chuck an ice cube at it. Is this going to do enough? Yeah, that was enough. So as long as a lover's card doesn't show up, lover's card did not show up, we should be fine. Hmm. That'll give me one of the personas that I need to fuse, um, Neko Shogun. Oh, we only got one fashionable dish out of that. I believe we need three. Yes, we need three. Okay. We also need to make sure that we don't accidentally sell those to Daidara because we need to give them in for a side quest while they're still materials. Oh, hey, more of you. Yeah, enemies can sometimes show up, uh, like, smaller or bigger. I mean, I can't believe I haven't mentioned this until now, but I just didn't really see the point. I think sometimes if they're smaller or bigger, it affects their HP. Like, I know that shadows kind of have randomized HP values, but it's really not that much of an issue. The main thing that you have to concern yourself with is how big the shadow appears on the field, because that shows how high of a level it is relative to you. And hey, we have all the fashionable dishes now. So, yeah, we're actually done with our farming already. Kanji might have to take a bit of a rest soon. Also, Teddy's level up quotes are great. I, I'm annoyed that I just talked over that. And he has flown Traesto, so we can now spend some of his SP to flee the dungeon if we want, but Goho M's are so plentiful that I generally prefer just to use those. But, uh, yeah, this farming session really wasn't all that painful. There's not a lot of quests um, for Risei's dungeon, which I suppose is a good thing, because it means that we spend um, as little time as possible in the underage strip club. And again, we are the FBI coming to shut it down. So, back to what I was talking about when it comes to Teddy's voice. So, I think as regular Teddy... There's pretty much no difference between Dave Wittenberg and Sam Regal's performances. They sound pretty much exactly the same to me. Although, it is definitely impressive range for Dave Wittenberg, because Sam Regal is known for playing uh, comedic characters, so 
this is kind of a lot more in his element. Whereas Dave Wittenberg has played characters like Welkin in Valkyrie Chronicles, who's pretty much the complete straight man of that game. Um, he was Kefka in Dissidia Final Fantasy, an insane, nihilistic, evil clown. Basically the Joker, but with delusions of godhood and um, other aspects and um, a lot of his personality provided by um, creative localization liberties by Ted Woolsey that I think even Japanese fans actually like, because I've heard that Japanese Kefka isn't exactly popular. But um, anyway, I'm going way off topic here. That hit really hard. I don't think we saw you in our last run through this place. Wow, it's puny. This will be cake. This thing is weak to ice, so shouldn't be too difficult for us at this point. But we still have this stupid silver dice. Rise, don't say it's no problem. Those things actually killed us once. I mean, you weren't. You would know you weren't there for that. No, that's even canon anyway. Okay, there's the first instance of him saying that. In the anime, he points out that he always wanted to say that the first time that he uses that line. And that pun was in the Japanese version as well. So, Teddy's um, penchant for bear puns isn't entirely exclusive to the localization, because in Japanese he said Perukuma or something. <laughs> I completely forgot Kanji had power charge. Oh, I guess I can show this. It looks exactly the same as Goho M. I want to head back and save before we face this boss, and I also want to see if I can actually fuse Neko Shogun now. Also, how much are you going to charge for healing? Not a lot since we're rank 9. But I have a lot of these, which I'm going to use instead. Okay, so here's my slightly silly plan. I have Null Physical on Hypixie. Sakimitama is one of the components of Neko Shogun. If you fuse two personas of the same arcana together, the result is the next lowest level persona of that arcana. This can be a useful method for filling out your compendium if you've got a lot of uh, empty slots and you can't be bothered to look up a uh, fusion recipe online. So with this, it's also a great method of passing down high tier skills to low level personas, which you might want if you're, um... Say you really like Izanagi's design, but you, um, you know, are understandably, um, a bit... Put off by the fact that his skills suck, well, you can fuse down to him, in fact that's the only way to fuse Izanagi at all, because he is uh, level 1, and fuse some pretty high level skills onto him and then grind him so you can have a really good Izanagi. It's a lot easier to do things like that in Persona 5, but it's definitely possible in 4. Saki Mitama has achieved true inner peace and now nulls rage. Wow, look at that magic compared to endurance. But anyway, that's two of the Mitamas we need, and for Kusi Mitama, that's the one we're going to use to get Buffalo onto the result, and for that we need to get out of the compendium... King Frost, who starts with Buffalo, and I believe Waffle. Yep, there we go, that gets us Kusi Mitama. So on you, we can pass down... Buffalo. And I guess I can just put like a whole bunch of debuffs onto you and stuff. Resist Fire is not bad to pass down either. And now we just need the angry one, Aramitama. Strength, okay, this one's gonna level up a little bit. 
I know that in some games, the Mitamas, well actually in some games, the Mitamas act as a, a special way of fusing. They kind of act similarly to the treasured personas in Persona 5. But in others, they have like balanced stats and everything. Now I think Aramitama is Chariot. In fact, actually I know it's Chariot because in the anime, it's a plot point that is Chariot. There we go, there's Aramitama. Just a base of one. I've always kind of liked Aramitama's design. I think just for the simple fact that it's the lowest level Chariot Persona in Persona 3, and Chariot's one of your first social links in that game, and as my first Persona game, I got well acquainted with summoning the lowest level Personas of the early social links. Anyway, with that, we should have all we need to make Neko Shogun. The Great Warlord of All Cats. He will lead his cats to conquest and demand pets and laps and food. And maybe some catnip. But I will also just mention this, Black Spot. This is actually a skill Chie gets later, and that means it has a really high crit rate, so that's uh, not a bad thing to pass down. So, these special fusions, in general, gotta make sure to remember to pass that down, and also gotta remember to pass down Null Physical, or a lot of my early efforts will be for naught. I guess we can go Invigorate 2 as well. I could get three elements onto you if I go for Garula as well. I mean, you're not exactly the greatest persona, but with Null Physical, you'll definitely be decent. Oh, apparently we get a trophy for that. I forgot about that. And I may as well see this animation. So what I was going to say is, I'm pretty sure that these can never be accidents. So you don't need to worry about um, all of your hard work for this going to waste. See, apparently this is a Taoist deity whose name got mistranslated and one of the characters was interpreted as the character of a cat, and so this happened. Oh, Mataru Kaja's great, we just don't have enough of a star rank to get that. Oh well, we're only one Emperor card off of that, I guess. So, now that we have Neko Shogun with Buffala, we can leave the Velt Room and re-enter for a Margaret rank up. And I think her next request is one that will get us something pretty good. As far as the persona we need. Welcome to the Velvet Room. Really? I'm not so sure, though if, if I... I'm honestly surprised Igor himself has never been a super boss in any of the games. He'd probably be kind of absurdly powerful. Oh. Okay then. Cats aren't exactly known for having long noses, though. I'm now picturing a long-nosed cat, and it sounds terrifying. So yeah, more of Margaret kind of flirting. Though I just realized there's that, there's that glass near her with the bottle. Is she drunk all the time in this place? Black Frost is not only an incredibly good persona, but you actually need to fuse it if you are on a max social links run. And we're only one level off being able to make him too. And I think we, yeah, we already have all of the personas needed to fuse him, so yeah, I've already gone ahead and prepared Jack Frost in advance, so yeah, one more level and we're there. Definitely a great persona to go for. I think we should be ready for the boss of this place now. So, this boss mainly uses physical attacks, so resist or null physical personas are really good for it. It is weak to ice, which is why I have both Chie and Teddy, but it doesn't really take a ton of damage from those, so physical attacks are kind of the way to go. Anyway, let's go. I'm so sorry, Risei, that you have to see this room again. So, uh, we didn't have to fight the other babies in this strip club, but instead we have to fight their leader, the boss baby of the strip club. One enemy on the field, you can do it! It likes to increase its own crit rate with rebellion and then murderize you with physical attacks. That one's totally weak. Better not lose. That's basically the whole theme of this fight. 
It is weak to ice and it can be knocked down, and knocking it down and then using a power charge vile assault, let's just say, would uh, be pretty good. So that's I think what I'm going to do. I'm going to go for a power charge here. And Chie, I guess, um, oh yeah, we've got to toss up whether it's Chie or Teddy who'll knock it down. But, uh, you know, on this first turn, I think I'm going to buff Teddy's attack. He already has buff defense thanks to his auto Rakakaja, but I'll probably get rid of that uh, pretty soon. Then he can Buffala. Yeah, it is pretty bulky, unfortunately. And like most of these mini-bosses, hitting it again while it's down usually does more damage than um, actually doing an all-out attack. If I'd leveled up Kanji once, he could have got Vile Assault... Oh, Cruel Attack. Uh, Vile Assault's the better version. He could have got Cruel Attack here. Um, and then, oh boy, Momentary Child is Indignant means that it's about to use Deathbound, a heavy physical damage attack that hits the entire party. At least it's not Power Charge, though. Can I debuff your defense with a Null Physical Persona? Null Physical Maraku... I have Maraku Kaja, that's actually not a terrible idea. I think I'll go for that. Don't actually think I have anything that can debuff its um, defense now that I think about it. Okay, yeah, you'll just guard. You'll get a bit of damage in and then guard. Sometimes a critical or a weakness gives you a cut in, and sometimes it doesn't. Oh, Rampage, okay. Yeah, that's Rampage on the third optional boss. <laughs> Compare that to Rampage from the first optional boss. Yeah. Okay, I do have Rakunda on something. It's something pretty weak, though, so this might be a bad thing, but I guess we can try. Because I always like to wait until their defense is down before I go for my power charge attacks. Okay, yes, okay, okay, I've got an idea here of what I'll do. Not gonna revolution because that could be potentially bad. Let's just see how much this does. My plan is that I will leave it up. I'm gonna all out attack here so that Teddy's able to get one more out of it. I'm gonna leave it up through the whole turn. I'm going to uh, just go through my normal motions, then on use turn, I'm going to use, um... Just say it's up to you, Sensei. I'll say the word and it's bear time is another good all-out attack mode, but I'm going to knock it down with Undine and then go for a power-charged cruel attack. Kanji, on the other hand, oh, he could have debuffed this thing's uh, agility, but I'm going to go for this. It's going to spend a lot of the fight knocked down, so it's not like um, our attack's going to be missing often. Oh boy, Assault Dive, and it missed, okay. Attack Reverted is not great for my plan, so I think I'll put off going for that again. Switch to Neko Shogun, I guess, just to show you off. Attack of the Ice Cat! Which reminds me of a, um, a boss scene, I think it's Rystar that had this boss. Um, that in the Japanese, it's a boss of a snow area, and uh, in the Japanese version, it's a cat, and you have to feed it spicy food, because in Japan, a way to say that someone can't handle spicy foods is to say that they have a cat's tongue. But of course, we don't have that in English, so they had to change it to a snowman monster in the uh, localization, so its weakness still made sense. Uh, but anyway, yeah, Risei just helped out with an all-out attack there. It's random, but it does a little bit more damage if you get that. So, uh, I guess I can go back to my thing talking about, uh, Dave Wittenberg. So, while most people agree on, uh, like, that the- most people are pretty much indifferent on who's the better Teddy for normal Teddy, but there are two instances where where there's a bit of disagreement. The first is Shadow Teddy. Dave Wittenberg's take on Shadow Teddy is quite different to Sam Regal's. Sam Regal uses a lot of voice distortion, while Dave Wittenberg actually uses um, pretty much his normal voice. But he has a very 
interesting way of speaking. He sounds much more like what TV tropes would describe as affably evil. Close your eyes. Lie to yourself. Live in blissful ignorance. It is a much smarter way to exist. How I'd sum it up is that Dave Wittenberg's Shadow Teddy makes him sound like a parent calmly telling their child that there's no Santa Claus, all while spouting all these nihilistic uh, statements. It's It makes him creepier to an extent, but for certain reasons that I can't talk about for a while, I do prefer the voice distortion on Sam Regal's Shadow Teddy. But yeah, like I said, that's for things that I'll get to later. The other is Human Teddy. Apparently Human Teddy, uh, like Dave Wittenberg's take on Human Teddy sounds a little bit different than, um, is Kanji attack buff? I don't think Kanji's attack buff. Sounds a little bit different than his typical Teddy voice. Sam Regal does vary his performance a little bit as Human Teddy. But it's not as significant of a change as some people say that um, Dave Wittenberg's Human Teddy is. So really it's just kind of a matter of taste, just like um, Chie's voice is. A lot of people prefer the Tracy Rooney Chie. I personally think that this Chie fits her character better, but to each their own. Okay, there we go, finally got two hits out of that. As you can see, this is really not a particularly, um, like, super difficult boss fight at all. I think I'll just, yeah, go for another Rakunda. Because it's possible that another power-charged cruel attack might be enough to finish this. Uh, just in case this reverts soon, I'm going to put that back up. Don't want to have to delay in unleashing that power. Meanwhile, your defense debuff, Teddy's attack buff, let's go to town with ice. Or let's miss entirely, because why not? Uh, another Herculean strike at this point with your attack buff could be kind of bad, I just realized. So I'm... I'm gonna do this. I still love how Takumi Kazuchi crushes the lightning bolt when attacking. Indignant, okay. Well, at least you... You never needs to, um... Oh, we can only switch personas once per turn. That's, uh, uh, even if we get a one more, I believe. That's kind of annoying. I don't think that was the case in P5. Wait, so we just debuffed its evasion, and we're missing more often now. For some reason. Yeah. Uh, I feel like this is going to wear off on Teddy soon. I'm going to put, put that back up. And I think Teddy uh, could just use his turn to heal. I haven't even healed with Teddy yet at all. And that's one of his main traits. You hit the enemies. Okay, I gotcha. Yeah, I need you to heal. Like, Teddy's basically a slightly more versatile Yukiko, like that's what I find. He's Yukiko with buffs, and honestly, I really like the fact that he has buffs. It gives him something to do when the enemy uh, is immune to ice. Okay, you're gonna use Deathbound, huh? Yeah, there's Deathbound. Uh, yeah, Deathbound is kinda painful. Okay, then. Oh, people are gonna miss out on experience, but I don't think this will finish you, though. I mean, obviously that won't, but what I mean is uh, I'm referring to Power Charged Oni Attack. And here we go, Power Charged Oni Attack! Yeah, no, that wasn't even nearly enough. So, uh, Revival Bead time. Teddy does not have Recalm yet. He will actually get Revival spells later, but he can't possibly have them now. Uh, well, there goes Teddy again. Uh, but now I can probably... Okay, I'm gonna Balm of Life Teddy just so he doesn't go down again immediately. Well, Kanji, are you okay? Well, uh, Kanji is at least good at surviving things. 
And I think the turn order's a little bit out of whack because that baby is now going before uh, Teddy. Oh my. Are you sure? Why? Because we're all about to die if you don't heal us. I think that's a pretty good reason not to go for an all-out attack. Okay, it's still down. I can cruel attack it. So this is a cruel attack on a down enemy without power charge, buffs, or debuffs. Yeah. Those things really, really stack up, especially with power charge. <laughs> Come on down. It ain't going down. I think that was power charge as well, speaking of power charge. Uh... I think this thing is immune to... Yo, I mean, it's almost certainly immune to Dizzy, because I've been hitting it while it's down a lot. Let me guess, Herculean Strike again? No, okay. Yup, uh, there goes Kanji. Um, well, uh, if Kanji misses out on experience for this fight, it's really not the end of the world, because he's already kind of overleveled. But I guess I'll just, um, bring him back. So yeah, despite the massive damaging physical attacks, unlike the Contrarian King, they're all telegraphed. So it's really not that bad of a fight. Oh boy. Uh, I don't think Chie is going to be able to finish this, unless uh, this hits really, really hard. Yeah, even if it crits, it's not going to get dizzy or go down again. But you wasted your turn, so you're pretty much dead now. Which is a bit of a disturbing thing to say to a baby, but it's an evil demon baby, and that's kind of like I've noticed a bit of a primal fear for a lot of people. Creepy babies, they show up in a lot of horror settings, especially Persona Q's Evil Spirit Club. Yay, a courage increase that we didn't need! But that puts us at just the right level to fuse Black Frost. So we'll have him as we go into Mitsuo's dungeon. But while we're here... You seem low on health. You want to examine the rear side of this pole for... Because Reset doesn't need weapons, the weapon here is for Teddy. And if I remember right, this is actually a pretty good weapon. Counter physical low odds and, uh... Pretty powerful. Yes, yeah, a claw that reminds foes why bears are dangerous. If the blood in Teddy's, um... In Teddy's follow-up attack didn't already tell you that. Anyway, let's get out of here. And I think now I can probably afford to pay the fox for healing. Well, we, we found a, a baby, but it's gone now. No more babies in strip clubs. And no more strip club! That should be the last time we ever need to go there, thankfully. I just barely have enough yen for that. I don't think I have enough yen to summon all the components of Black Frost, though. Yeah, so I might need to go and uh, go into the dungeon for a little bit before we do that. I'm going to check, but I kind of doubt it. Because I'll probably need to fuse Makami into something, and yeah, we'll, we'll work that out next time. So yes, next time we actually go into Mitsuo's dungeon and hopefully fuse Black Frost, who is amazing. See you all then.